As you can see, I've rearranged once again, and I'm having a little bit of audio trouble, so I'm not quite sure how this one's going to sound, but I'll try my best. But in the meantime, it's time for something I've been dreading for a while, fixing the AI. When I last left off, I was pretty confident in the approach, but I knew there were some critical bugs. And honestly, what I should have done from the beginning is unit testing. Several years ago, my full-time job was actually writing automated software tests, but ever since I've had an irrational reluctance to write tests for my own software, especially games. So far, I've been relying on manual testing, but when trying to diagnose problems in a complex system, it really helps to break it down into smaller, testable components. So that's what I'm focusing on this week. I want to start with a brief recap of how the AI is structured overall. The first step is to gather a list of action candidates, and these can come from any object in the game, and some of these are meta actions that get expanded into multiple concrete steps. The next step is to score the initial game state, as represented by a game board, which I used to call a context. Then for every action candidate, the AI clones the game board, simulates the action, and then scores the resulting state. If that score is higher than the initial score, it will then calculate an improvement ratio, the difference in score divided by the number of actions it took to get there. Only the action with the best improvement ratio is remembered, and then if at least one beneficial action was found, the final step is to execute it on the real game board. So I'm going to have two categories of tests, one for the AI system itself, and then one for the objects that participate in that system by suggesting actions, simulating them, and scoring the state. But first I had to do a lot of restructuring, mostly making the game board more independent so I can create it on the fly and add objects to it without actually adding those objects to the game scene or affecting anything else in the game. I already had the ability to simulate actions on a cloned game board without affecting the canon state, but it did assume that all the objects on the board were real objects in the scene, and for tests I didn't want that. And in the process of this restructuring, I already found a critical bug, where items were being scored based on the canon game state rather than the experiment that they were being scored for. I also had to split up the AI into more functions so I could test piece by piece, and I made it able to operate on any game board as a starting state. Next, I built a rudimentary testing setup. For now, it's just a list of function pointers and labels for each test case, and I'm adding helper functions as I go for repeated tasks. This is all very basic, but good enough for me as a solo dev. Now I want to take a closer look at a couple of my test cases. In this test of the AI infrastructure, I start by creating a game board and manually adding a region. Then I create a test object and place it on the board. Next, I'm adding a unit. You'll see the game board passed into a lot of these functions because it needs to encapsulate the complete state for every object. Every cloned game board gets a new copy of the state, so that changes won't affect any other game board. Next, I'm adding a couple more test objects, one to be carried by the unit and one to be equipped. Then I use an AI function to collect action candidates from the board and make sure all three test objects are included. Next, I test the scoring mechanism. Because units contribute to the score, and I'm not trying to test that formula in this particular test case, I start by getting the initial score. Then I assign scores to each test object and a test mod script, and then make sure they're all included in the scoring of the state. This next test is all about cargo crates. Once again, I don't care about the unit score, so I add that first and then score the game board with nothing else. Next, I add a crate and a cargo pad and make sure the score goes up. Then I move the unit closer to the crate and make sure it goes up again. Then I do a series of tests of the process of picking up the crate and taking it to the cargo pad, first giving the unit one action point at a time. This way I can test the handling of incompleted actions, make sure I get the correct suggestion at each step, test execution of each step, and make sure the score is always increasing with any progress. Next I repeat this process giving the unit two action points at a time, and finally I repeat with four action points so the unit can do the complete pickup and delivery in one turn. And now I want to talk a little bit about my findings so far. When a test fails, the first question is always, is it a bug in the test or a bug in the product? And there were certainly a lot of bugs in the tests at first, but I found one thing that's sort of a bug and sort of a design confusion. When spending action points for a simulated action, units were allowed to spend more action points than they actually have for the current turn. This would incur a penalty for the estimated danger to the unit of staying in that position during the player's turn. However, looking at the rest of the AI code, it looks like it was intended to only consider actions that can be completed during the current turn. So I've settled on a sort of compromise. It will consider actions that won't complete during the turn, but it will only simulate up to the end of the turn and score the action based on the state at that point. This seems like a good approach because, for example, when scoring crates, every step along the process of moving toward the crate, picking it up, and moving toward the cargo pad increases the score. So it should see an action as valuable, even if it doesn't make it all the way through that process. 
Now, I'm probably not done testing the AI, and there are a lot of other things I should probably test too, but I want to end with sort of a moral to the story. Don't do what I did. Don't wait until latent development to start testing. If you plan for testability from the beginning, it'll be a lot easier to structure things in a testable manner. And if you start writing tests early, you'll find bugs early and not be confused about why things are broken. And I guess that's all I have for this week. So as always, it really helps me out if you hit the like button, spread the word, and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, thanks for watching.